Hey everyone, it's Fox, and I am out in my garage today because I'm actually going to work on some cosplay stuff for a change. It has been a long time since I've worked on some stuff and it has been an especially long time that I have worked on the thing that I'm going to show you here in a second. But if you watched my video where I talked about struggling to finish projects, I talked about this project in that and I almost feel like making that video was sort of like therapy for me in a way. And also it kind of like reignited my desire to want to actually finish this costume and this is the first step. So without further ado, I'm going to show you or try to show you as best as I can what I'm gonna be working on and how I'm getting back into this project. It's very big. <laughs> um. <laughs> Before I put this down, I wanna just show you some things. Now it comes apart. There's wooden dowels right now that are connecting it. And obviously they're not like glued in place. I was toying with the idea of maybe putting magnets in here so it could be somewhat collapsible. We'll see if I end up doing that. But I really wanted to show you something funny. I hope it can get picked up here. But do you see that? Maybe if I put my, I don't know if you can see, there's literally cobwebs on this. I'm not entirely sure when I stopped working on this, but it's been a long time, as you can tell. And the thing is, is that this is almost done. Like it's almost completely finished like with the filling and sanding process of it. The thing that I'm going to concentrate the most on today is this weird thing. This is where like the pommel, the handle, whatever you want to call it, will insert in here. And if you look really close, I hope it's being picked up, but it has a lot of like high spots that still need to be sanded down. There's a little bit of sanding that needs to be done on the rest of the ax as well, but I'm really gonna focus on this. I have not had the urge to actually work on a costume in what feels like months. Just like I said in that video about struggling to finish projects, I don't care that the last time I worked on this was two years ago. It feels just as exciting right now to dive back into it, especially if you guys are familiar with the Fire Emblem series. There is a sequel, well, it's not really a sequel, but there is a game coming out at the end of June, June 24th, I wanna say, and it's called Fire Emblem Three Hopes. It's gonna be kind of like a continuation or just another story within that universe with the same characters. I'm kind of setting a soft goal for myself of getting this at least ready for paint, by June 24th. Like if I could do that, that would be great. I have never been this excited to just sand something. <laughs> so let's get suited up and let's sand some stuff. <laughs> Alright, so I ended up so I ended up sanding all three of the pieces of the axe with some 100 grit sandpaper to get a bunch of the high spots down to the low. As I was sanding, I was noticing a couple spots where there needed to be some gap fill put in. So I ended up using some of the 3M acrylic green putty that I've been trying out and I've actually really been liking it because it dries super quick. And that's on all three of the pieces. And right now I'm just kind of waiting for them to dry and then I'm gonna probably I don't know, I might use my mouse sander and use a like 220 grit, like a higher grit of sandpaper so I'm not like completely tearing it apart and then just sand those parts down and then I think I'm gonna put a coat of filler primer on it and then I'm gonna call it a day. It's a little bit close to six, I wanna say. And I told Brian to come down and yell at me at 6.15 if I wasn't done so that I could shower and we could make dinner. So I'm ahead of schedule. So I'm gonna check on all these pieces, see if that acrylic green has dried and I'm gonna get to sanding real quick and it'll be quitting time for day one for me. Hey guys, so it is Monday, May 15th, 16th, and I'm taking my lunch break from work. I work from home and I am going to head out to AutoZone because yesterday I finished up 
putting some filler primer on that axe. However, I ran out of filler primer. I only had one can left. I'm taking the opportunity to go out to AutoZone and pick up some, I believe it's called Duplicolor filler primer. It comes in gray and red, and I've heard really good things about it, and I wanna give it a try. Every time I looked it up online last night though, it said it was like $17 a can. I really hope it's not $17 a can whenever I go to AutoZone. cannot begin to tell you the amount of like purple power I had to buy when I worked for Drum Corps. We use this stuff all the time to clean all of our fleet of trucks and stuff. And yeah, cadets bought a lot of this. All right, well that was kind of a bust. I didn't see any Duplicolor primer in there at all. Um, I may have missed it. I did like two sweeps of the store where I normally see it and I didn't find it. So I ended up just getting a can of the Rust-Oleum primer, the, this is the red, because it's starting to get really hard for me to see spots that need to be sanded with all the gray. I'm probably gonna stop at, there is a Pet Boys across the street and there also is a Harbor Freight further down the road. Probably going to run to Harbor Freight, then I gotta go to Target, then I'll probably go to Pet Boys on my way back to see if they have it. All right, well, no dice on the Duplicolor primer, so I'm probably just gonna have to order a can online, give it a shot. While I was in there, I did pick up a can of the stuff that I normally use, two-in-one fillable primer. It is a little bit different looking than normal. It actually says automotive primer on it. I don't think the other ones I have do. And shout out to Greg at AutoZone slash Pet Boys, which I didn't know that it was the same store. It was apparently AutoZone that I went into, but the guy that was helping me out did not treat me like a lost child in an auto parts store because most of the time whenever I go in these stores, I'm either ignored or patronized too, basically for being a woman just going inside of an auto parts store. It's like I go into these stores, I realize that I'm not in there for the auto parts side of things. I'm really in there to just get these primers and leave and a couple other things. It's raining today, so I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to put a coat of this primer on. I probably can because we do have a garage and it's sealed off, but we'll see what I end up doing, but I do need to get back home because I need to get back to work. <laughs> I was able to do some sanding on the axe and also put on another couple coats of sandable primer. I am starting to enter the phase of just doing hand sanding, which is honestly like my least favorite thing to do. I really prefer using my mouse sander. All the layer lines are pretty much gone and I'm just trying to smooth everything out. And also during that footage, I did glue in some of the spiky bits on the fan piece. I glued all of these horn bits in and I accidentally glued one of the horns on the wrong bit and I ended up having to like, you know, kind of chop it off and get it right into the right spot. But I'm gonna have to do a little bit of fill work here. Like, it's not actually terrible, but I also have to put a little bit more of that spot putty in here to fill in those gaps. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now with the ax. And also one more thing, there is, oh Jesus. There are supposed to be some, they're called teeth in the files, like little spiky bits that go here. As you can tell, there's like little register kind of spots where they get slotted into. I misplaced them. I don't know where they, are. I know that I printed them out because I have them in my like pictures and stuff. So I'm just gonna have Brian resin print out these three little teeth here. I'm trying to think of what else I need to do on this to get it ready for basically putting it together and getting ready to paint. And I think the only other thing, there is going to be a resin cast of the crest that's supposed to be in here. I really want to see if I can light it up. I might burn a hole in here so I can stick the LED battery in here and kind of like let it go through down into here so that I can access it so that there could be some LEDs on the back of this. So I think that would be cool. It's one of the last things that I'm gonna do on this, obviously, because no point in doing it now while I'm still sanding everything. But yeah, I think I'm just going to put some more of this 3M 
spot putty on here, let it cure for like an hour or so. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna do any more work other than that today because we're going to Griss house after work. Roll that footage of me putting spot putty on cause that's great content. <laughs> I call this the kidney bean, but here's the kidney. And then let me go grab the fan piece. And here is the fan piece. So yeah, that's kind of like what is happening this week. It is a lot of sanding and that is just the reality of working with 3D prints is you spend the majority of time, you know, just sanding these pieces and getting rid of all the layer lines. And it really does pay off in the end whenever you have a finished piece that has no seam lines or, you know, very diminished seam lines and print lines. I was kind of getting frustrated with myself the other day. I was looking at this entire ax and basically was like, wow, I really didn't do a lot of work on this, which I know that that coming out of my mouth makes absolutely no sense because I found some older photos of the actual 3D print itself and how many pieces I had to print this thing in like this. So all four of these spikes were individually printed and this piece itself was in two pieces. You can't, I mean, I can't tell where the seam line is on this thing. Same thing goes for the fan piece. Whoops. This I think was I think this may have been five pieces and it had a big old seam line all the way down here and you can't see it anymore. I really need to start cutting myself some slack, but I just wanted to put that out there and let you guys know that you are not alone in potentially like if you look at something that you've been working on and you're like, wow, I put a lot of work into that and it doesn't feel like it's gotten any better or you know what I mean? And that's kind of the trap that I fall into whenever it comes to working with 3D prints and sanding. It's a lot of work for not a lot of reward. So like I've just been sanding all week and using filler primer and stuff and it feels like every time I finish I'm kind of back at square one because I'm consistently having to sand. And it's just one of those mental things that I really just need to remind myself, no you've put a lot of work into this to get it to this point and I'm finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel because I will be doing some hand sanding on these pieces today and then potentially wet sanding. I'm not sure. I It depends on how I'm feeling after doing all this hand sanding. So I will probably start with 220, maybe 320 if I have any, I don't think I do. If I don't, I may still use my mouse sander with the 320 grit on it and just lightly go over everything. I'm not gonna sand this to like a super glossy finish or anything like that. This is going to be painted to look like bone. It doesn't need to be that glossy or great of a finish. And I say great of a finish in the sense that if it's a little bit rough and if there's like a little bit of texture somewhere, not stressing too much about it. So now that you've gone the whole spiel of what I'm doing today, let's actually get some work done. So I literally just ran upstairs to go get a SD card, brought down this thing that houses like all of my cards. I looked down,
It was right fucking there. <laughs> Anyways, just want kind of wanted to give you a quick recap to round out the video. This axe basically looks the same as it did when I started, which is just the the fact of life of 3D printing. We just basically sand and then you use filler primer and then you fill in any holes and kind of repeat that cycle until it just doesn't have the layer lines anymore. This entire week of work was absolutely essential because there was still a ton of high spots. There was still a ton of layer lines still showing through and I really cleaned those up and I did a little bit of wet sanding the other day. I am very happy with myself. It has been a long time since I've actually worked on any sort of cosplay and I I was really kind of kicking myself because it's just, I, I love doing this. It's just like, I didn't have the motivation because I know a lot of the time I struggle with this. Like I worked on this ax a year ago and then I just stopped working on it because of bo and Mando. And then I get to this point where it doesn't matter to me that I worked on it a year ago. Like the time in between does not matter. I'm still just as excited to work on it. And that's what I really enjoy about just letting myself kind of be fueled by whatever is taking me. I guess you could almost refer to it as like follow your muse or whatever. I usually have multiple projects going on at one time and that seems like a lot but actually I'm not really working on all of them at the same time. With Bo-Katan and Mando those were 3D printed builds and I also was working on Sylvie you know at the same time and that was all foam. I'm always doing something different every day and that's been really key for me to not get burnt out and also to kind of help me just work with my brain and my brain needs to you know be excited about stuff. I just hope that this video and process kind of helped you see me coming back from an old project and this could be you too. It's you don't always have to be working on something brand new. You can go back to your unfinished stuff. If something's calling to you then work on it. Who cares how long it's been since you last worked on it. Anyways that is the end of this video. I appreciate you guys all hanging around until the end and I am going to reward myself because I just finished filming the bo helmet tutorial. I'm gonna reward myself by going outside and sitting in the hammock and playing some Fire Emblem Three Houses. So I will see you guys later. Bye! Come here. <laughs> Come on, you wanna go inside? You wanna go inside? Let's go inside.